the greenhouse really is very much asleep and plants aren't looking their best but there are some signs of awakening and I just want to start with a, a look up the shelving here and you can see down in the bottom right hand corner how the Dudleya is really shining like a beacon when the sunshine hits it in the greenhouse. A fantastic succulent plant covered in farina or mealy. I'm trying not to go into my own shadow here. Here we go. Um, which is this kind of coating that comes off in your finger when you touch it. And this plant is from the States, as I've been advised on several occasions when I've featured it. Having a look across, and the next thing that really grabs my attention is this Veltimia bracteata, which now has three bulbs in the one pot and is producing three fine flowers, three fine flower spikes. And um, you can see there are three separate growths there. So this one is doing really well. And if I'm lucky, it will flower again for me before it goes dormant for the summer. But um, looking really good this year. Moving along, we have some firm favorites and the Buffon is here. Currently suffering from mealy, as we can see in here. But it is in the process of going dormant at the moment. The leaves are um, are uh, going yellow and falling and then I will give it a good spray. I don't really want to spray in the crown of this plant at the moment when temperatures are still very low but it's doing quite well and my Buffon seems to be on a completely different schedule to my friend Liga's whose channel I'm sure you know but anyway hers has flowered uh, quite recently but mine has never flowered and just goes dormant later than hers does. So that's that. Echeveria Compton's Carousel. What visit to the greenhouse would be complete without showing this lovely little plant. And last year I removed numerous rosettes from the stem of this plant. Um, so I've just got two large rosettes and one small one at the moment which I am going to conserve and try and build the plant up again because I really don't want to lose this one. It isn't reliably propagated from leaf cuttings in that it can be propagated but you don't get a variegated plant so you really need to produce it from the little rosettes. Okay, so no more rosettes coming off that for a while so please don't ask here we can see the poor cyclamen need a bit of watering but um, they're providing a splash of color at the moment in the greenhouse and that is one of my pet peeves my pet hate sayings a splash of color I hate when people say that and yet I've just gone and said it I mean you know why would you want a splash of colour in your garden, for example? You want a, a, a melody of colour, a, a variety of colours that complement each other, not just a splash that sticks out like a sore thumb. I guess that's on a par, really, with my other pet peeve, which is border filler. Why on earth would you want a border filler? And yet so many plants are advertised as border fillers. That's ones that are going to fill up space in your border. What's the point in having a border if you're going to just fill it up willy-nilly with stuff that just grows easily? Borders are for showing off those plants, those really gorgeous, wonderful plants that you want to show off. Anyway, okay, shush. That's enough ranting, Rachel. Okay, so we're looking at Cymbidium, my no ID yellow Cymbidium, which is producing cascades of flowers this year because I was too lazy to stake it. But it is one that really kind of, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not too bad like that. One spike, two spike, that one over there, three spikes. We have the uh, two more in here. Oops. That one, that one, there was one broken and, I don't know, more behind, but uh, it's, it's a nice sunny colour, isn't it? And over here is an example of something that really shouldn't bother to flower at all. Look at these flowers, they're so insignificant and weedy looking as far as I'm concerned, but it's quite an attractive 
succulent with very interesting formation. Can't think of the name off the top of my head. I think it's a type of Senecio, but you'll find the name in the details of this video. But the flowers, oh my goodness, they really detract from it as far as I'm concerned. It really shouldn't bother. And I'm just going to do a mini spotlight on this unusual fern you see to the right of the video, not the variegated aeonium you see over here. Now this fern is called, and I'm going to show you this, it's a hairy lip fern, and the name is that. Fern names are absolutely impossible, the worst possible thing. And what's so unusual about this fern is that it's a dry fern. I mean, normally they take quite damp conditions, but this one likes it dry. And it's actually a bit too dry here at the moment. But can you see the new growth starting in there at the base? The new shoots. So this is one that lends itself to a pot very well. And also, I believe it, ferns usually like shady positions, but this one likes more sun so it's quite unusual in that respect i just going to give them it a drop of water here so there you go after talking about how it likes everything dry i give it a, a good drink but it is really quite attractive when the fronds come up and it begins to unfurl this cute little plant here is a cotyledon speciosum and it has these very attractive succulent leaves with kind of pinky tinges to the tips and it produces these flowers. Isn't that really interesting? There's another spike here. Very cute little thing. There it is sitting in a pot beside the agave attenuata. Over here on this side we have the pelagonium table of course looking bad in winter but this winter flowering one is just looking super look at all the new leaves it's produced and flower spikes that one there should be flowering soon with its tiny little white flowers a real <laughs> not a splash of color a real joy in winter over here we have my desus waking up after well after being kept in slightly less moist conditions over winter and the flower spikes from last year have mostly rotted off now. I removed several of them just before I took this video and I replenished the water so they're now sitting in water again just going around and removing any leaves that want to come off to kind of avoid rotting with these. Now be careful not to pull because pulling can pull up plants as well as leaves and nobody wants that. Okay, I probably need a scissors to get off anything else here. But um, yeah, they're looking good. Again, I gave away several of my deces this year to people, so um, I don't have as many as I should have, but I think, you know, I, I do quite well at growing deces. And down here in the greenhouse we have the dead horse arum which is waking up after its winter's rest. This is one that produces leaves before it produces the fabulous stinky spave. So unusual really in terms of aroids but that's looking really good despite having been divided this year. On this side of the greenhouse, the Ansete bananas are ticking over there, which is all I expect of them at this time of year. And the Furcrea are looking wonderful over there in the corner. No sign of flower spikes yet, but that's fine because once this one flowers, it dies. And I'm very happy to have plants this large to put in my garden during the summer rather than, you know, a spike that's only going to last a limited amount of time. Over here we have my muscia, which is looking really, really wonderful, like it really enjoys the winter. It's really perked up and um, it was a constant struggle in summer to keep it hydrated. I really should have planted it in the ground, but it's doing really well and seems to be producing um, new baby plants down at the base, which I hadn't expected. Anyway, this one is also monocarpic, so it will die after it flowers, but produces 
the copious amounts of seed but by chance I have actually been given seed of this plant this year so I must try and germinate that soon. Over here we have my citrus plants kept at temperatures lower than they ever should be but they seem to do fine. That's the super orange that Josh gave me. It's doing well. They had some um, black coating on their leaves which you saw me clear off from aphids or from whitefly really a while ago but they seem to be doing well since. And here we have my protea, my king protea which has that flower spike coming and it has this flower spike coming and that seems to be it for flower spikes this year but you know two I'll take, two, are, two is a good number. Bartlettina is also looking good, Bartlettina sordida I think and um, this is one of the plants I took from cuttings when my large plant had a bit of an accident a few years ago. And up here at the very top we have my Sparmania, which shows no, no sign of flowering this year, which is uh, a bit disappointing, but um, it has these large leaves, which is looking really good. There's the extent of the plant, it goes down there. This here beside it is my daughter's fig tree, which I'm minding for her since she's abroad but uh, Sparmania looking very nice in the sunshine. And here we have an alocasia that I grew from seed in 2014 so that was 15, 16, 17, 3 and a bit years ago and it's quite a big plant overwintering in the greenhouse just beginning to give it some water now and it's quite quite big as you can see. I grew it from berries actually, from the seed in berries and had various of them at, at different stages, gave them away etc. So this is the last one left. So I hope it does well for me. But it's looking quite good. Over here we have my Senecio Angel Wings which you'll have seen me buy in Johnstown at our get together this year. And I will link to that video up above. But so far so good. It's looking like a very very pretty plant, one I'll probably put in a pot during the summer and just have in the garden. Just down there catching my eye is, well, there's one here as well, <laughs> but it's an agapanthus, a variegated agapanthus that I have recently divided into several. It produces a blue flower, but it's quite a small one and the leaves really, really are very attractive. I'm liking that one a lot. And here we have an Aeonium in flower. And these do tend to flower in the winter. And after they flower, the branch that they flowered off of dies off. You can see it's already started a bit down here. But this, I'm lucky with this particular plant because it has a cluster of other rosettes here. so. I'm not going to lose it after the flowering. Of course, it could collect seed and go again. Here's another spike up here. I must say the yellow really is attractive in the sunshine. Down here on the floor we have this little collection that Alberto actually put together when he was here. Well, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same plant. Some of them are, but... Uh, I've maintained a little collection here in the corner, mostly succulents. And that's my agave down there. Yeah, <laughs> it's not doing terribly well, but it's still hanging in there. And underneath the staging, you can see all of those orchid pots that I've bought and never gotten around to using yet. But I think probably this spring is going to be the time for a major orchid repotting, so they'll come into use. And I think I'm going to wrap up this video with a shot again of that lovely yellow cymbidium because it really is a glorious thing on this, well, sunny but freezing day. 
okay that's all for now thanks very much for watching and check back again for lots more gardening and plant stuff soon it'll be time to take the plants and repot them and, and pl plant some of them in the garden again so stay tuned for all of that bye